Hello everyone, and welcome to this walkthrough of Surface Insert, part of Normal Magic for Blender. Insert meshes can be thought of as decals, patches, or plugs. They require open edges to properly cut and weld themselves into the surface object. Let's create an insert mesh and insert it into this dome object. Here I'll start with a plane, add some divisions, rounded corners, and a groove going around the edge. I'll also add a Mark Sharp modifier to make it shade properly going forward. Selecting the dome object, I'll now add a Surface Insert modifier, and using the Object Picker, I'll select the insert mesh we've just created. We've now successfully inserted a mesh into our dome surface. Let's have a closer look at the options on the modifier. The projection method Wrap to Surface will warp the entire insert mesh to match the underlying surface. Blend to Surface will keep the world position of the insert mesh and blend to the surface with masking options. Here I'll change the viewport display of the insert mesh to wire so we can better see the result. Snap Objects to Surface will move and align insert meshes to the surface before projection and there's an option to offset the insert mesh from the surface. This height offset also works when using wrap to surface. We can see the normals around the edge here don't look correct. That's because it's using the insert mesh's original normals. In the insert mesh normals panel, we can tell the modifier to recalculate normals affected by the projection. By default, normals will blend across the insert mesh boundary, but we can achieve a sharp edge by selecting New Mask here. A problem you might encounter, especially when using Blend to Surface on curved surfaces, is that the original surface isn't cut away properly. This is easily fixed in the Surface Boolean section. The options Boolean Extrusion and Boolean Offset will transform the internal cutter. Instead of working blind here, we can use the debug view for cutters. Here we can see the wireframe of the original surface is above the cutter. Boolean offset will raise the top of the cutter above the surface, and Boolean extrusion will make the whole cutter thicker. Switching out of debug view, we can see this issue is now resolved. To look at the projection masking options, I'll create a new insert mesh. This time I'll use a circle, and make sure it's got lots of edge loops for a large blend to the surface. Once again I'll set this to display as wire, and then add a surface insert modifier on the dome, with its projection method set to blend with surface. Under Projection Masking, we can control the fall off to the surface. The default configuration will only project the boundary edge, but we can make the blend larger using Expand Boundary. The Base Fall Off menu lets you add an S curve to this blend, and the Fall Off curve will curve the points towards the original surface. By default, the Blending Mask will also be used to blend the normals of the original surface. For more control, we can create a new mask, just for the normals. Different masking methods are available, and are covered in the documentation in full. Let's look at how we can control which edges are cut into the surface. This modifier has been set back to the default settings. If I create a hole in the insert mesh, you can see the original surface will fill the gap. This is because every open edge on the insert mesh is cutting into the surface. We can control which edges are cut using vertex groups. Here I'll select only the outermost edge and add a new group by pressing Ctrl G. I'll rename this vertex group Surface Insert Cut. As you can see, the gap is now present on the surface too. 
you can change the name of the vertex group in the modifier under the surface boolean panel. Solid shapes in the insert mesh won't be able to cut at all, but they will be projected to the surface. You can see that when projected at an angle, there is some skewing in the result. This can be improved by changing how the projected geometry is displaced, from projection direction to surface normal. Finally, let's look at how materials and UVs are transferred to the insert mesh. I'll add a grid material to the dome object, and switching to material preview mode, you can see the welded parts of the insert mesh have inherited both the material and the UVs of the dome object. We can control this behaviour in the Materials panel of the modifier. Transfer Material UVs will transfer a single UV map for each inherited material. We can change which materials get transferred. The default setting will transfer material islands that touch cutting edges. This means if we assign a new material to an inner part of the mesh, it will be preserved. Choosing All will transfer all materials, even those on solid shapes. Let's have a look at nesting insert meshes. Here I have a handle I want to insert into this door panel, and a keyhole I want to insert into the handle. I'll insert the keyhole as we've been doing so far, by moving it into position and adding a surface insert modifier to the handle. In this case I want a sharp edge so I'll choose New Mask for its normal. Now to insert this handle I could move it into position, but I'd also need to move the keyhole. I could select them both or parent the keyhole to the handle, but this is a good excuse to check out the Instance Object modifier. To set this up manually, I'll add a new plane mesh and add an Instance Object modifier. Selecting the handle, I now have an instance of the handle that includes the effect of all the object's modifiers. In the Pro version add-on, there is a button to duplicate instanced, which automates the setup and names objects accordingly. There is also a button to select the source object. Now I can insert the instance of this handle, while keeping the original convenient to edit. Thanks for watching and make sure to check out the other normal magic videos.